So we're now ready to make a sound. We've set up the stage, we've plugged things in, and we want sound to come out. We come to the mixing desk and don't be put off. This is, it's true, a complex piece of kit. It can do loads of different things. There's all these buttons and knobs and things on it. Um, and that can be really intimidating. Good news is it's still a mixing desk. It's laid out exactly like the analog desk that we've seen in the basic introduction to what a PA system does. Um, so you don't need to get into an awful lot of detail to get a basic thing working on this desk. I'll show you how you can go from a standing start to at least something working really quickly. One of the first things you need to get your head around in terms of the difference between this and an analog mixing desk is that although we've got faders which we're used to and we've got knobs which we're used to, um, they can be assigned to all sorts of different things and there's an awful lot of them. So what you can see here is 24 faders in one go. Um, and so that's the big reason why there are other buttons you're going to have to learn about even for really, really basic stuff. But we are going to look at the very basic stuff. What happens when you boot it up first is this kind of welcome Digico SD9 screen. This is where it starts. It's really worth, well worth checking when you're beginning that when you boot this up at the top here, it should read that the session is the Ivy Church Didsbury default and it'll tell you the last date it was saved. If that session does not have the word default in it, it's well worth loading the default session because all of these things can be changed. The way the default is set up means you can get running very, very quickly. So if you ever load up the system and it doesn't say that you've got the default, you can load the default. So don't panic. We're going to use the touch screen. We go files, load session. We're going to find the default here. That's it there. And we're going to click on load down there. It'll say you've not saved your previous session. Are you sure you want to continue? Absolutely. Any changes I've made, I do want to be lost because I do want to load the default. So what will happen is we will wait a few moments. Lights will go off. Good news is during this process, you're not going to hear any bangs or clicks. Nothing is going to go boom. You're not going to blow anything up. If you make a mistake, at any time. If you just have no idea what you've done, you can't get to a thing you recognize, you can always go through this process of reloading the default. So here we are, we're ready, everything's back up, and we're ready to use it. So now what we see is that I, that doesn't look like a mixing desk to me, and you're absolutely right, it, it isn't like a mixing desk. What we need to do is to put something different up on the screen. So we need to assign something different to the screen. And what we have therefore is this button here and this button here. And these are for what's being monitored. We assign this lot, one, two, three, four, five channels, one, two, three, four, five up there, or this lot, one, two, three. And we can switch between them to our heart's content and the right things come up on the screen so we know what we're doing. If you ever need to return to the thing where you load the session, load the default, press master screen button here, takes you back. This is where you go, help, 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 reload the session. Um, and you can, uh, you can do that to your heart's content. So I always recommend when you've got some time, play, have a feel for this. But we're kind of doing the very basic. We want to get the handheld microphone running. That's it. Or we've got a vocal and an acoustic guitar on the stage as well. We want them to be live as well. How do we do it? So first thing is we need to decide and choose for ourselves what things are active on these controllers. What you'll see at the moment is that although these look like faders, some of them have just got nothing on them. There's no label, no lights, no nothing on here. Press on here, it confirms the fact I've got handhelds one and two, the headset, VT play and playback but there's nothing else on these faders. Where do I find, for example, the drum kit? Where do I find the, uh, the acoustic guitar and the vocal mics? That's where these buttons here come into play. When you press this, it's going to bring up a whole new set of channels up there. So just watch. Press that. We've now got drums and bass and keys one and keys two and electric guitar.
Similarly, we can load here by pressing that with the other traditional channels in our band. We've got acoustic guitar and vox and BVs and instruments and tracks and things like that. So what you press here determines what is loaded onto these faders, what these faders then end up controlling. And you'll see that you can have real flexibility of what you're seeing on your faders. And that allows us to have many, many, many more than just 24 controllers. 24 is a lot, but this system will do many, many, many more than that. And it does it by making these not hardwired into a particular channel. This fader here is not always the acoustic guitar. If I press something else, like I press the masters button here, this fader now is controlling the level of all the drums, all the drums together, that's on a group. Go back to here, now it's just the acoustic guitar. And similarly over here, at the moment this fader's controlling the kick drum, but if I switch into a different list, that's now the acoustic guitar, which is replicated there, which is why they're both moving. And if I come over here, this is now handheld one and so on and it remembers my settings. So if, for example, I've got myself a beautiful blend of all the drums there and the bass and the keyboard and that keyboard and the electric guitar and vocals, you've got, really got into it and you've got a wonderful selection of things there and I press that, don't panic. You haven't lost the settings, they are still there. I can still adjust handheld one and two and the headset and some music or video playback on there. I can come back, I've still got my same settings, just as when I go to that panel, I've got those settings saved. So you don't lose things just because you're not actually seeing them here. So let's take all these down. Let's go back to that very basic scenario we proposed, which is that we have on the stage set up the acoustic guitar and the lead vocal, and we want one of these radio mics, handheld two, to be live. How do we do that? Well, let's do a demonstration, first of all, with handheld two. Learn about these mics, very basic. They've got a red thing on the bottom, a little button. Press and hold it, and it switches on. Ta-da, very nice. Uh, it's labeled with a two at the bottom, but it will also tell you HH2 in the little panel there. To switch it off, you do exactly the same thing. You press and hold until the light goes off and that's now off. Um, you can change the battery in them by unscrewing the panel there. Change the battery, very straightforward. Screw it back up and switch on. So, how do we go from hearing, or speaking into this microphone, to actually hearing it? Well, first of all, I don't see HH1 on my screen. I want to find it on a mixer panel, but it's not here anywhere. So I'm going to just flick around. It's fine to keep flicking and hunting till you find what you want to find. Here we go. It's on this panel three here. Now, actually, you'll also find it somewhere else sometimes, but not always. Yes, there we are. So on the control groups and the master, it's on here as well. I'm going to speak into it and you see straight away that because this system is set up with lots of default settings already programmed in, you can see handheld 2, it's actually replicated both sides, um, and I, you see there's a signal, hooray, there's actually a signal, but we can't hear it yet. So what's happening is the signal's coming into the top of this strip, we know that it's got good gain because it's preset for the default IV settings. We know that all these other things will have been preset as well. So in this case, it will be going to the hearing loop, all the things you might worry about, but you don't have to, it's set up. But we still can't hear it. Well, I wonder why. Well, the first reason is that it's muted. Let's unmute it. The second thing is that the fader isn't turned up, so there's no actual volume to it. It's not in the mix, so to speak, but we still can't hear it. I wonder why. The reason is to do with these masters. So right hand panel, bottom screen, this is called CGs, control groups, and masters. And what we see here is there's a master fader, but everything master is muted. So nothing, absolutely no signal we could set on the desk, no amount of turning this up or down will give us any sound. We need to unmute, and then let's ease this up 
to minus five. That's a good starter point. Some people like it louder, uh, but we'll kind of go for minus five to begin with. And now I can say that we have sound and I can hear myself. And what's really good is, again, because this system has been set up for the default IV central settings, we can actually get this really quite loud before we get any feedback. Now, if I stood in front of those small speakers just at the front of the stage, we're definitely going to get feedback. Um, but we've now got a really loud live microphone. It sounds okay. There's no feedback. It's worked. Brilliant. So I can adjust the level of that with my fader like this, and I'll actually turn it all the way down just so that the, uh, the recording works. But we've got the remote microphone, the radio microphone. It's switched on. The signals come down through the strip. We've unmuted it, we've got it live. Let's do exactly the same thing with our acoustic guitar. Now, we've not actually got a guitar we can demonstrate on, but I just want to prove to you that getting set up with a basic mix is really simple. Where is the acoustic guitar? I can't remember, I can't remember. Keep pressing buttons wildly until you find the right one. I remember, it's on this panel up here. Here we are, acoustic guitar and vocals. Let's unmute each of those. Now, as I look down my strip, this is when you start to wonder how much adjustment you can make. And the answer is huge amounts. I'd look at some of the other Ivy training videos to get into the detail. But I just want to highlight a couple of things to reassure you about the setup you will find when you go to the default settings here. The first thing is, do you remember on the acoustic guitar DI box, it was an active box. It needed power on the stage. We've got a tiny little red light there that says 48. That means it's getting 48 volts, what we call phantom power. The desk is set up so that acoustic guitar, you assume it's plugged into a direct inject box, you assume it's an active one and therefore it needs power. That's the default. As you come down the strip, you'll also see that some of the EQ settings have been adjusted for a typical acoustic guitar. If you look to the channel to the right, which we see labelled as vocals or vox, um, that doesn't have phantom power on it. It does have some EQ sets, there's different EQ settings because traditionally a typical singer will need different EQ settings from a guitar. All that's done ready for you. All we need to do therefore is turn up the faders and see if we can hear them and make sure that they're not overloading. That's all. Now, on the case of the guitars and the rest of the band, these are grouped together. So it allows you to do some quite nice things. If we go back to that scenario, we've got everything running. Drums and some bass and some keyboards, electric guitar, lots of singers and a flute and a horn all set up like that, for example. You might at some point want just all of the drums to be a bit quieter or all of the singers to be a bit louder. We can do that because all the drums go first to a drum group before they go to the master. Press this blue button bottom right, look at the control groups. We've got drums, bass, keys, guitars, vocals, and so on. Um, these are flashing to warn us that actually some of the guitars, the acoustic guitar we know, has been unmuted already. It doesn't matter, you've not broken it, it's just a kind of notification. So, let's say that we want all the drums to be live, and the bass, and the keys, let's make them all nice and live. Um, what we can then do is unmute these, and as the band are playing, we can say, drums, mm, let's, just, let's just turn this down a little bit. And the vocals, let's get those up a little bit. You don't have to go to the individuals, you can just do the group there's a bit of confusion or potential confusion that we can cause here because we've got all the drums come into the drum group and then all of these groups, <coughs> excuse me, go into all, that's all of the band. And finally, all of the band goes to master. So don't you let yourself be confused by that. What we've done now is we've unmuted all the groups if there was someone playing now, we would hear them from the guitar. If someone was singing, we could hear them. And we can adjust the volume like that. 